The Chargers took Tuli Tui Pelotu in the second round, and I knew that they would go edge after taking wide receiver in the first round. Now, a lot of you guys don't know who this is. And again, it seems like some of you are upset. So if I can hopefully calm you down and convince you that this is a good pick, then I don't know, you know, maybe leave a like or something. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so first off, we got to get this straight. It's Tuli. 2E Pelotu. It's kind of confusing the way that first name and last name kind of sound similar in the beginning, but Thule, Tui Pelotu. All right, Thule was the Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year. I watched him all year at USC. He had the most sacks with 13 and a half sacks of all prospects this year. So boom, right there, we're adding the most productive edge player when it comes to sacks. You like that? He's really, really smooth for a man his size. He's got a really impressive arsenal of pass rush moves from lots of different alignments. And he was pretty impressive along the interior as well. And that's where his quick processing ability and his quick twitch was able to shine through more rather than on the edge against the tackles. He's listed at 290 pounds, but he didn't seem to play that big. And if he is a consistent edge player, because the Chargers did announce him as an edge player, then you'd like to see him get stronger so that he can hold up there consistently and anchor down when he needs to. And he doesn't have the burst or the bend that you would ideally want in an edge rusher, even though sometimes he'll come off the, the snap and you're just like, whoa. So he is inconsistent in that regards. He has a flash here and there. Speaking of inconsistency, he's pretty inconsistent as a tackler and he had a 31.4% missed tackle rate last year graded by PFF. And to me, that is the craziest stat. 31% missed tackles while also having all of that production. He had 16 defensive stops and 13 and a half sacks. That means that he was in position to make more stops this year, but he just couldn't finish the play. Kind of like how Melvin Ingram was early on in his career. But to me, it's a great sign that he's in position to make plays often. And that is indicative of his football IQ and his ability to learn. He's also like Melvin Ingram in his ability to play on the interior as well. And if Thule has the ability and willingness to learn, then he can learn to wrap up. And then he can get more stops, more sacks. And now some of you guys may think that this was a reach because there was a big run on edge players early in round two, but I actually like the value here. And I think that the upside is extremely high for two. And that tracks so far because in round one, Tommy T took the highest potential wide receiver. And now here we are in round two, taking in my mind, the highest potential pass rusher. And notice how I said pass rusher, and that's because he's gonna play in a lot of different spots along this defensive line. And Brandon Staley is gonna have a really fun time putting Tuli Tuli Pelotu in all of these different pass rushing sets. I mean, I can't wait to see Khalil Mack, Joey Bosa, and Tuli Tuli Pelotu rushing the, the passer. I mean, th th it's gonna be, woo! Now the dream going into day two was Michael Mayer, BJ Ojulari, or uh, Brian Branch. But all those guys were gone by the time that we picked. And the only op other option here in my mind outside of trading down was Aditamiwa Adibare. And I think that would have been a pretty big reach, especially considering that the production that Thule has far outweighs Adibare. And I know some of you are screaming at me right now. What about Darnell Washington? Well, I, I think that... We're kind of in a spot where we need to draft an edge player because in my mind, the team is clearly drafting positional value right here because the value of a pass rusher is so much, it's exponentially higher than a tight end like Darnell Washington from Georgia. So you know this Chargers coaching staff knows what they're gonna be getting into with him because they have all those connections to Georgia. It is so much higher than a tight end like Darnell Washington who's specifically on the field basically to block and then catch two or three passes a game maybe. This could also bode well for guys like Donald Parham and Gerald Everett because they're not adding to that tight end room like we all kind of expected them to early on. We still gotta wait for that third round draft pick but I'm recording this, I'm making this video before the third round because I had to get my thoughts out there quickly. Overall, I really like this pick. I hope that you guys do too because a lot of you did not know who this was but then when you found out he had 13 and a half sacks, the most of any player last year, a lot of you were on board. And if you are on board, make sure to like this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys in the third round very soon.